there was a conversation recently that Chris Hedges had with Shama Sawant. And Chris Hedges, of course, is, is awesome. You know, recommend him. He's on Substack now because, of course, he got deplatformed. And in this conversation, which we're going to play a little bit here that he had with Shama Sawant, she talks about demands. Uh, you know, the ALU did not agree with all of that. And it, it was because they decided to build independently. And then they did many things that most labor leaders haven't done in the last. And she's talking here about uh, the Amazon Labor Union, the ALU, and how they, they won their strike vote. Last four decades, which is one, they led with concrete demands. You know, they, t- they didn't talk about the union as an abstract entity. They made it very clear to the workers in the warehouse, and workers made it clear to workers in the warehouse that we need a union because don't you agree that we need to win a $30 an hour starting wage? Don't you agree that we need job security? Don't you think that we deserve a say in scheduling? Don't you think that we should get full-time hours if we want them? You know, it was through concrete issues that they were able to build uh, this kind of solidarity, you know, shop floor solidarity where it, you know, you may not agree, you may not get wor- workers to agree on every single thing on this plan and on every ideological issue, but if you can get agreement on a core group of concrete demands, and that is a solid basis for building a unified struggle. So that was the part that that really uh, tweaked my attention was when she's talking about a concrete list of core demands that everyone in your movement can agree on. That's kind of what I have in mind. My thinking is, is not so much that it's that it's me or it's or it's a particular person that needs to come up with this list or it has to be this certain list, but we we need to figure out how to be collaborating on the left to get to some version of that to where we can say these these are our demands. This is what we're we're organizing around. This is this is the core of our, of our movement. She even mentioned a little later on in the interview that we need campaigns organized around demands and not personality politics. Yeah, definitely. It's uh, one thing that, that's always a little dystopian is, is when you go onto candidates' websites and go onto their issues page, if we're just talking about like a garden variety Democratic or Republican candidate, and it's just very mealy-mouthed nonsense uh, issues. So, yeah, um, I, I, I know you know we, we have some demands that we're going to share but yeah it's definitely something that should collaborate through without the left and one of the kind of demanding in a general way you know that that democrats do better you know that that used to be enough (laughs) yeah you know that was kind of the bernie movement in a sense of you know and that of course is the aoc the squad movement is this idea that that we're going to to get democrats to do better and I think for most of us in, I don't know, what would we call it? The, uh, the, the force to vote left, the Jimmy Dore left. We're, we're, we're past that, but, but not everyone is. Well, I, I think those are people that we almost have to collect up because I actually think 2020 was, was, was important for people if they don't realize it because I think a lot of Democratic voters uh, were Bernie people and then they were force-fed Joe. And they, they didn't like that. And so, and so now what's happening <laughs> is... Chill. Yeah, so now what's happening is they're becoming abstaining voters. They just don't vote anymore. <laughs> and what they don't know is that they're lefties <laughs> and mm-hmm. that they need to be in this progressive movement. Uh, but it's 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 part of capturing some of those people in uh, because they're just uh, cynical. <laughs> you know, so that's that's part of what we're going up against, which is created.